why not, right? Traditional Japanese homes are very are really interesting. Um, uh, I don't live in a traditional Japanese home, actually. Uh, yeah, I live in a real, very modern home, actually, right? And uh, of late, a lot of Japanese families are building homes that are more, the more, more modern edge rather than the traditional Japanese home, yes. Uh, traditional Japanese homes are very cool, very interesting. Um, and I have, I made this slideshow here. Uh, it's a brief PowerPoint. I'm just gonna show basically uh, some pictures of some traditional Japanese homes. Uh, have a, few, a little discussion uh, with a couple of people, hopefully about their thoughts on traditional Japanese homes. And I'll show you a couple of pictures I took uh, in central Kyushu here, Gokanosho, uh, of some very, very uh, old uh, traditional homes that have really interesting elements. Now, this is interesting, especially if you like Japanese architecture which I do, it's, it's really unique. Uh, it's of course ancient, right? Hundreds of, uh, if not thousands of years old. Uh, and, uh, of course we can see in picture number six here, this is an old uh, thatched roof uh, of the traditional Japanese home. Yes, that, uh, that later after that became covered with uh, kawada or roofing tiles here in picture number three. Uh, so I really like Japanese homes. Uh, there are a lot of Japanese homes still in existence. Some of them are really kind of old and have gone by the wayside. So you, you really have no choice but to rebuild, unfortunately. Hopefully people can kind of uh, remodel or, or reform and maintain the tradition in traditional Japanese homes. Uh, in Mount also here, uh, about 40, five minutes from where I am, maybe even less, uh, there are some traditional Japanese homes that have been around for, for centuries, yeah. Uh, Kozmon also is really well known for uh, its, uh, its farmlands and its grasslands. Uh, and there are still to this day, many small uh, traditional farms in Mount Aso right, that have been owned by the same family for years, generations. There's one that uh, unfortunately I didn't have a chance to take a picture of, but I will hopefully soon here coming up, that does have a traditional thatched roof that has been covered by um, uh, metal, actually, a metal uh, outlying uh, portion, right, over the thatched roof. But you can walk over and you can still look under and see the thatched roof portion. Uh, of, of that home. So that's really interesting for me. The traditional home has a lot of elements that, uh, that are really uh, decorative, yes, and for kind of the nuance of the house, right? Uh, and you can see that in number one, this little enclave here, uh, this indented area is called a tokonoma, which I have uh, some other pictures of. Uh, and I think it's, yeah, it's really, it's a really interesting element of Japanese homes. Yeah. Uh, traditional homes also have uh, tatami mats, right? Mm -hmm. Which uh, are really uh, interesting. Uh, although I don't have one in my house. Hi, Dan. Hello, Jeffer. How are you doing, sir? I'm okay, I guess. Yeah, I'm into my third day uh of the the vaccine and uh yeah. the pool is going well hey theo howdy howdy how is that going yeah uh yeah the so i got the injection on tuesday and yesterday i had noticeable pain at the injection site um did you yeah, and uh, you know, both uh, either from touching the site or by moving my arm. Um, and in the morning, uh, so yeah, yesterday morning, I noticed when I got up, I felt a little bit off. Uh, I I thought I might be uh, I might get a headache, but I didn't. I kind of had a, you know that strange feeling, like you know. Uh, anyway, but uh, it never turned into a headache, and as the day went on, it got better, not worse. And uh, today, yeah. um, today uh, there's no pain from moving my arm at all and only just 
you can just barely tell, you know, uh, where the injection was, even when I touched my arm. So everything's looking good. Yeah, great. You got the Pfizer. Is that, that's correct. I right? got the Pfizer. I'm a Pfizer man. Yes. Me too. I got the Pfizer uh, last Thursday, one week ago, actually, uh, today, one week ago. And yeah, I had some black and blue. Uh, my arm is actually a bit black and blue, but uh, and I had a, a bit of pain the next day. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was pretty painful there, but uh, no fever, nothing other than that, right? Yeah. I, uh, although I knew I, I talked to a few students who got the Pfizer and uh, they had fevers afterwards. Hmm. Uh, I just yeah, feel, so I don't know. I just I just feel fortunate that uh, I didn't get the Moderna or the Johnson and Johnson or, or I, I, I'm very fortunate that I got the Pfizer because it seems that the uh, efficacy is uh, at the top. The side effects are near the bottom, you know, uh, as far as, you know, the likelihood and severity. So I think it's probably the best combination, uh, at least for me, since yeah. it was available. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's good. However, I heard I've been hearing on American news. I don't know if you watch American news, uh, but they're saying the Pfizer is less effective against the new variant, the Delta variant. Right. Really? Uh, although that's just in a few studies. Yes. Right. They say the Moderna is uh, more effective uh, in just that variant. The Pfizer, of course, is still like 67 or 68 percent effective. The Moderna's in the 90s, the last thing I heard. Uh, however, that's based on uh, just a few studies, you know, not 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 many studies, not mm -hmm. not a plethora of studies. So I don't know. But I'm you know, I'm happy to just get, to get it started, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, any, any yeah, of better than nothing, you know, I, you know, the least effective right. is still much better than nothing. So, you yeah. Right. And uh, Theo over here says, hope you didn't get the Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. Did you hear about that? The, the recent that the causes uh, a, a neurological disorder. Right. We talked about what that. I forget the yesterday. name of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd heard about that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. No, no that's a bit freaky for me. I mean, yeah. gosh, you know. Yeah. Uh, ho hopefully <laughs> Pfizer <laughs> down the line will will be fine. Right. I think it will. Of course. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And, uh, uh, I mean, you know, like I said, I, I'm just glad to get it started. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, Jeff, I don't know where you're getting your information, um, but you know this. Is, oh, this... I just saw CNN. CNN. I saw. Oh, well, there uh, you go. Recently, you know, you that that kind of, you know, I mean, what? Right. <laughs> there you go. Wow. I mean. Well, you know, I've been I've been watching CNN continually. Uh, negative news. <laughs> um, so right. if you, I, you probably can't see this, maybe, but uh, you know this. So uh, on this one, the, yeah, the, I, that's, that's the one, the one you one sent me, me, right? No, no, this mm, is this is okay. this is from six days ago. This is only from six days ago. This is brand new. Okay, and so the blue line, you can I can't see that. Line. No, no. Um, well, can we? Um, oh, you didn't make um, me. Uh, you're you're the one who has to switch it up, man. So make it the main make it the main window. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. Number one. Yeah. Now it's a little yeah, bit yeah. better, but you still okay. can't really read it. So anyway, the blue line, the blue line is Pfizer. Okay. The blue line is Pfizer. And if you look at the top, this is talking about uh, uh, efficacy and the blue line, the Pfizer is at the top of almost every uh, chart that they've got here. Yeah. Astra, uh, Astra I see that. is here and uh, uh, Moderna is the green one. They're, they're comparing... Over on the, the, the left side on each of these columns, over on the left side of the column is the alpha variant, and the right side is the delta variant. And you can see it goes down, but in every one, the, the Pfizer is still above any of the other vaccines. So I don't know, you know, I don't know what, what CNN read or you know, where they got their information, but this is just yeah. the one that I called up uh, you know, right away. But uh, I've seen, and they might all be quoting the same things, but this is from... You know, this shows four different countries, England, Scotland, Israel, and Canada data here. And every one of them has hmm. Pfizer at the top. So I don't know. That's what, interesting. I yeah. Know what CNN quoted. Uh, I know Japanese things. Japanese news, too, has been tell, saying that about the Pfizer Moderna uh, 
issue. Been saying what? Uh, although, you know, that was last week. So who knows? Maybe it's changed since then. This is six days old, you said. So it was the end of last week. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's the most recent. And I don't know. Again, yeah, I don't know either where everyone's getting their, their information. It seems like there's kind of a little bit of a mismatch there with some info. Um, yeah, but I, I believe you. Sure. I mean, I mean it's, it's not me. It's just, uh, it's just this that I pulled up. And like I said, I've, I've, I've done, you know, several searches, you know, uh, for information like this. And it always seems to, to give me basically the same, um, you know, the same, you know, comparisons, you know, that the Pfizer is always at the top of the list for uh, efficacy. So I don't, I, you know, I don't know. Um, good, good. Yes. Well, that's great to hear then. Very, very good to hear. Yeah, my my family, my family members also said that they saw in the news that the Pfizer is less effective. Uh, but again, you have the data, you have the chart. So well, no, there I, you go. I really right. don't have a, a you know the de I mean I, that chart that I showed you. Let's see, here's one. Let's see, um, social vaccine are effective against Delta variant. This is from eight days ago in the Japan Times. Um, but I don't see them comparing. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I see a lot of a lot of the you know news articles about uh, uh, about saying that the the vaccines are still effective against the uh, the Delta variant. Now, I, now, yeah, I'm wondering, you know, if they if they misheard or misinterpreted what they said because it is true that the Pfizer vaccine is less effective against the delta variant but not when compared to another vaccine right when compared the for example mm -hmm. the uh the alpha variant compared to the delta variant you know pfizer is less effective against the delta variant than the alpha variant but then every you know every uh, vaccine out there seems to be uh you know that seems to be the case and pfizer is starting with the highest efficacy so it just seems very strange to me that pfizer would drop from the top to you mm -hmm, know, below mm -hmm. somebody else. You know, I mean, they all, it seems like they should all kind of slide down the scale together. It would make sense, you know, I mean, especially. Too right, like, right. No, I agree. Like, totally. you know, just, none of that makes sense to me. And like I said, I haven't, I haven't heard that and haven't been able to find any data that supports that at all. So uh, I'm really kind of skeptical. Yeah, again, I haven't seen data, even on CNN, they didn't actually show data, right? Numerical data. So, yeah. but they also said uh, that uh, Pfizer was wondering if they should produce a, a booster shot already. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, I heard that. And to me, that's, you know, more looking for the ching ching, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, could very well be, of course, sure. <laughs> I mean, every everything I've now, heard. Now, Dan. Ching Ching has a different meaning in, in Japan, in Japanese, than, than you're using there, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> I won't well, expand on that. Yeah, but, uh, but that's what Pfizer's looking for in both in both dialects, man. You know, uh, bloody Pfizer, man. Okay. You know, um, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, you know that. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing that I've heard is that you know the the people from the the very to get the Pfizer vaccine, antibodies are still near the peak. They're not declining at all. I, I mean, are you know are, are not you know not significantly yeah. you know. Um, so that, no that, need for a, a booster. Well, I mean, I I didn't say that because we don't know. All we know is what we've seen so far. You know, we can't really project into the future. You know, you can't. You don't know what the what's going to happen. You know, but it's it's just. Of course not. Almost, yeah. It's almost unreasonable to expect that it's going to go, you know, I mean, it's been six, seven, eight months for some people, right? And it's been, you know, the maintaining that uh, that efficacy, the, the antibody mm -hmm. levels. It's just unreasonable to expect that it's going to drop off a cliff suddenly after after eight months or nine months or whatever. You know, that's just no, yeah. no, no antibody. I mean, until now, we haven't we haven't had any uh, any vaccines that have operated that way where it's, you know, 100 percent or 95 percent efficacy for for uh, for nine months and then 
nine months and three days, it drops off to 20 percent or so. That just doesn't happen. We've never seen that. Right. It just uh, it's it's very it seems very unrealistic. Definitely. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's fascinating. Right. Because we're basically on the cutting edge. We don't know the future. Right. We That's right. don't know how, how the vaccines will uh, will but, transpire. Right. We are dealing with a. So with it's fascinating. SARS, it's we are dealing with a SARS coronavirus, right? Remember, we've seen right. SARS before, and we do we have, have we, we do have vaccines for the for the original SARS, the SARS one, you know. And yeah, I just want to add to that that a lot of people have already been working on the mRNA vaccines for years, right? It just right. didn't come into effect in the past couple months. I mean, they've been working on it for years right. since the SARS uh, in 2003, right? So, right. Of course, you know, yeah, the technology, uh, you know, so, the, the yeah. way to make the MRA, yeah, that's, I mean, this is the first time that it's been, you know, uh, any kind of global distribution. So, on. but yeah, the right. research was going on for a while, but I mean, you know, the, uh, what I was going to say about, you know, the, the first SARS virus is people who mm -hmm. contracted the first SARS virus and uh, and survived, you know, uh, which is most of them. But you know, but there, there you know, it was a, a more severe uh, SARS than than this one has been. As far, I mean, it wasn't as contagious; it didn't spread, but it was, you know, uh, had a higher mortality rate. But those people that did survive maintained even after now. How many years has it been? They still have, you know, the uh, maintain the the uh, the antibody levels. They still are immune to the the SARS virus today right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's yeah. the closest parallel that sure. we have you know if you're gonna if you're gonna look at at uh, immunity over a, a long period of time the closest example we have is the previous sars coronavirus the previous sars right right and right. Mm -hmm. and that one yep. the mm -hmm. the immunity is still going strong so this idea i mean now it is. Mm -hmm. a booster for the delta variant now that i can see because the delta variant is enough of a difference that there might be some uh some escape you know the you know the, uh and so on so that kind of makes sense i could see where they 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 might argue for that uh but again i you know i think that's the, that's what they were alluding to actually yes. right you know and 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 that kind of yeah. makes sense but again if you know uh after we've gotten our you know the the two uh vaccinations uh you know whichever ones they are after we've gotten the two shots of the current uh, the current variety of of the vaccines that are out there, basically, we're not going to die from SARS or from 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 Corona. Right, right. We're, we're not going to absolutely. Yeah. We're right. Probably, it's very unlikely that we'll even end up in the hospital, even overnight. It's just we'll get sick, but it it'll be like uh, a cold or 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 flu, you know, light mm -hmm. flu. It's not going to be a hospitalization type of illness, right? Which for me, right? Eh, I mean, you know, uh, rather than you know, uh, standing in line and worrying about another vaccine and all that, you know, if I stay out of the hospital, I don't die. Mm -hmm. That's my main concern. I'm not even worried about the boost. Well, even if it, no, you're right. Even if it is a little less effective, we still we won't go into the hospital. We That's won't right. be in, in any uh, any 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 closer to death. You're absolutely right. We'll get sick a little bit and but recover. Yep. So that's the most important thing. Right. On. Um, you know, like I, I remember getting the flu, you know, influenza A type a couple of times. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my life here in Japan, it's it's pretty, you know, it's pretty serious. And I wasn't getting any kind of flu shot in, in those days. Right. Uh, so it happened naturally. Get the flu. You know, you feel bad. Right. For a day or two and then you recover. And then I started to get the flu shots, actually. Uh -huh. uh, maybe five or six years ago, I guess, because my family's, family's <laughs> impetus, basically. Right. Uh, and yeah, no, I didn't get any kind of flu at all after that. Boom, no, nothing, right? Yeah, so, well, I tell you, I mean, uh, uh, I I never get the flu shot. I think I've gotten the flu shot twice, uh, yeah. you know, a couple of times mm -hmm. for some reason. I don't know why, but I never get the flu shot. I have gotten the flu a couple of times, but I haven't gotten the, I haven't gotten the flu shot, but I haven't gotten the flu in the last uh, nine years. I don't think eight, nine years, you know, there you go. That's that's great. Awesome. Yeah. Now, I had one thing happen in 2020, at the beginning of 2020 uh, before uh, uh, coronavirus really uh, came upon us. Yeah, I was at a sushi shop with my wife. Okay, this was like December 2019 or January 2020, mm -hmm. right? Uh, really before it started to hit us. Yeah, and I was at a sushi shop and 
you know, it's Kaiten sushi. It's a conveyor belt sushi where the sushi comes around, right, and you pick it up off the plate. Uh, I generally don't like that. There are a couple of, of, of shops that have a cover on the sushi. Right. Uh, you can take it from under the cover. I, I like that, actually. Uh, of course, I haven't been to sushi in ages. But this at this point, we were at the sushi shop where you you order sushi and it comes on a plate specifically for you, right? Right. Well, it has to pass a lot of people, right? Right. Before it gets to you. Right. And it has no cover, right? Right. And at this, you know, on this particular day, I saw a kid, right, like looking at the sushi, right? Each sushi that came by, right? He was <laughs> just looking at it, like, you know, almost touching it, but not touching it, but looking at it very closely. Right. Uh, and he started to sneeze, yeah. Oops. Not on the sushi, but, you know, just started right. to sneeze towards his parents or whatever, right. not covering his mouth and what have you. Right. Uh, and, um, yeah, I we, we were like, oh, okay, right, whatever. We got the sushi, ate the sushi. The next day, I had a fever. Huh. Right. Yeah, I, I had a fever. Didn't feel good. Uh, I felt bad enough to go to the hospital, actually, right? Wow. I felt almost like a flu was coming on, right? Right. Because you can kind of tell your muscles start to ache, you know, you kind of feel like, whoa, right? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah, dude. It was like, wow, okay, I felt bad enough to go to the hospital. You know, they this was January, so they knew some, I guess at that point, they knew something strange was going on in China, I think. Uh -huh. uh, you know, like there's this weird flu type thing coming on. I'm like, do I have that? Mm. They tested for, for everything they knew about at that point. Right. No, nothing. Just and no, no, no influenza. Just, just a, a cold, just a fluke, right? Hmm. Took some medicine, you know. I had to miss a meeting actually at work because of that, and people were asking me too at work. Do you have that newfangled thing there, Jeff? <laughs> that newfangled flu? That newfangled flu? Yeah. No, that newfangled flu. No, no. Sorry, everything's cool, right? Yeah, That's the Chinese. Cool. Flu. Yeah, that was weird. That's the Chinese flu. You gotta hear yeah. your yeah. Trump speak. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, Dan, can I just show this picture here before? Absolutely. I know you want to show that. You're in control. Uh, oh, am I? Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> theoretically. <laughs> Where okay, yeah, this one I was just showing, just talking briefly about this one, uh -huh. traditional Japanese homes, yeah. Uh about this tokonoma here and the I started to talk about the tatabi mat. Now, Dan, do you live in a traditional Japanese home or traditional Japanese apartment? Um not not really, no. I mean, um it has uh Do you have a tatami room in your apartment? the the bedrooms are tatami the kitchen and the living room are hardwood floors so it's kind of a combination uh which is is fairly typical uh i mean this this apartment building i think is 30 or maybe 40 years old even and uh 30 35 years old and at that you know at that time you know the uh you know a lot of people wanted you know uh more modern more western style uh living room you know they wanted sofas and things like that while they're gathered around to watch the tv but a lot of people were still wanted the convenience and the tradition of sleeping on the tatami or sleeping on the the futon right you know so bedrooms are tatami and the living room kitchen are uh hardwood floor there were a lot of uh apartments and houses built in that era that were like that yeah yeah, 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 totally. Uh, I don't live in a traditional uh, Japanese home, no. We don't have a tatami room in my house at all. Mm. Uh, but my wife's cottage up in Mount Aso, you know, they do have traditional tatami rooms, right? There's kind of a loft. It's a very small cottage. Mm -hmm. There's a loft with a, a, an eight-mat uh, tatami room, Yeah. Uh, you know, on which we use mm -hmm. futon, right? Right. On one on the bottom, and if I'm lucky, I can have a, a double layer of ton on the bottom, right? Uh, and you know, one on the top, of course. And downstairs, there's a six mat tatami room that's next to a uh living, eat in, dining kitchen area with a TV and whatnot, and a, a large table. Mm -hmm. And there's a curtain separating the two. Mm -hmm. Uh, now downstairs, too, we use futon, right? Um, and it's, it's great. I don't mind it at all. 
I don't mind the Japanese style older traditional rooms like that. I mean, I even, uh, you know, my, you know, my family though, right. They're kind of getting out of the tradition, right. And making more modern homes with all wood floors and beds. Mm. I, I, of course, I don't mind that either, but I don't mind the traditional Japanese tatami room. You know, yeah, I, it's a little harder to keep clean. You have to vacuum it. But yeah. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Um, I mean, yeah, the you know there are strengths and weaknesses for for each uh, for each uh, you know for each floor. Um, yeah, the cleaning. I think it uh, you know it's a little a little higher maintenance uh, for the tatami. Um, you know, to really get it clean, you need to get down there on your hands and knees, you know, with the cloth and, and wipe it and so on. And, and, you know, you, you turn over the tatami every, every year or two or something like that. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, all these kind of things and it has to be the tatami actually should be replaced every, you know, every so many years, you know, I mean, not that often, you know, but about every six or eight years or something like that. Um, it's good to it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A lot of people don't, but yeah. uh, you know where I lived, mm -hmm. I always did, and so on. Um, in fact, this I haven't mm -hmm. uh, in the bedrooms where I am now, uh, and that's about the longest I've gone uh, living in a place without uh, without changing the tatami. Actually, I just I just prefer it. It feels cleaner. I like the I like the new tatami and so on. Although again, there's a little maintenance with that, getting off that first layer of of uh, the mud that they use to to treat the the tatami. Uh, you know, uh, with yeah, um, yeah. but uh, it's a great smell, isn't it? Too? Yeah, yeah, it it really is. You know, the smell um, is just it's it's, great. It's yeah, you know, cool. it's interesting to me to to see the tatami. Yeah. You know, uh, you know that's you know it's by a window, and you've got some things, you know, a dresser or the the whatever, you know, set on on uh, areas of the tatami that you know never get the sunshine in other places that are are sun bleached and so on and you move those things when you go to turn over the tatami or replace it or whatever and you see you know like the original color that was underneath the the dresser or whatever that was sitting there you know because yeah all the rest right, of it right, right. faded out over the years you know so that's always interesting but uh, yeah but, no the, the, that area is pristine isn't it yeah right. pristine it, and green you know i I, you know, honestly, uh, I, when I, especially when I was younger, I didn't mind sleeping on a futon and I did, you know, for my first uh, several years in Japan, I, I always uh, slept on a futon. Uh, but then Do you sleep on one now. Now uh, we have a bed. Now we have a bed. We put okay. a, we just put a bed right over the tatami, you know. Um, and uh, I I just like uh, you know I I prefer a bed. I guess it's 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 pretty firm. It's a it's a very firm mattress that we have on there and so on. But uh, I just I like being up off of the floor a little bit. Uh, uh, I, th sure. I feel that it's um, not this. Not necessarily cooler in the summertime, but I feel it's a little warmer in the winter time. And uh, I don't know. I just I feel more comfortable getting out of bed, being able to swing my legs, my feet off over the side of the bed, and stand up a little easier. You know, maybe I'm getting old. I don't know, but telling you, I just find that a little yeah. easier. Well, yeah. When we're up at the uh, up at the cottage, you know, we're always on futon, and we, you know, getting up in the middle of the night, for example, is hard. Right? You have to right. you have to kind of stand up and try to walk right or you know yeah. uh, it's easy to fall because our futon is raised above the wood floor it's raised oh, a few okay. inches uh, okay. so eight, eight or ten inches so that's it's you know it's a step down so you can fall actually if you're not right. careful yeah. now, to me the the, but the we, we too we sleep on a bed too yeah now sure yeah. in at, in our house in kumamoto city yeah to me, the Which great advantage of, of, a, of the tatami is, I mean, you really don't need a lot of furniture in a traditional Japanese home. You know, I mean, you have the, you have the, the seat cushions, the, the, the zabuton, you know, um, to, mm -hmm, to sit mm -hmm. on uh, and uh, a kotatsu. And, you know, that's about it for furniture. You know, if you got more guests come, well, you get out more of the cushions and people can sit anywhere. It's not like, you know, there's, a shortage of chairs because you know uh, as long as there's space on the floor there's uh people can sit you know and and uh relatively comfortably if they're used to to uh sitting on the on the cushions right um and the same mm -hmm, with, uh, definitely with the bedroom you don't have to have a bed you don't you don't have to have a frame at all you can just put the the stone right uh, right on top of the tatami and it's very you know it's very sleepable and so on so yeah i mean the 
you know, I, I guess the, you know, the, the lack of, of uh, space taking uh, furniture is a, a great advantage to the Japanese home style. I think so too. Um, although I don't really like sitting on the Zabuton too much, right? That's hard too. Mm. Uh, especially cross-legged. Yeah. That's really hard when you get older, I think. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you're they more, have these kind of futon chairs. Yeah. Huh? You're, you're more of a yeah, Seiza person. See, yeah, yes, yep. exactly. When I go, even when we go to a restaurant, like a traditional Japanese restaurant, right? Yeah, I sit seiza actually, which yep. uh, for all of you uh, watching is sitting on your knees, that Japanese style. Right, with your sitting. feet. I do. Up, I sit a lot. Right. Yeah, that's that's the way I like. Right. To do it, you know, and the Japanese are always like, uh, "Don't you get tired of sitting you know, the seiza style? You know, don't you yeah. want to relax and sit cross legged?" I said, "No, actually, this is more more comfortable for me." And they're just they can't believe totally. it. Totally. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I know they can't be they're like, come on, relax, sit down, sit, you know, sit cross legged. No, that's hard. Mm. It's hard on your back, too, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I think for me, the Seiza keeps my back straighter. Yep. That's why I like that. Yeah, more, yeah it definitely, that's... definitely improves your posture to sit you know, the on your knees mm. than uh, with your legs crossed like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Dan. Yeah, look at the the picture here. We got number three and number six, right? The the uh, the roofing tile or kawada, yeah. Uh -huh. and then we've got the Japanese tr uh, thatched roofs, yeah. Uh -huh. What's your thought about the overall architecture in in traditional Japanese homes? Um, the overall architecture. Do you like it? Do you like the nuance? Do you like how it looks? You know, do you like the feel of it? I oh, I mean, I was just yeah. Initially, it appealed to me because it was different, and so I appreciated, you know, the, you know, the the aesthetic different, you know, between the traditional, you know, the the homes that I grew up with, and so on, and uh, you know the, you know, the ceramic uh, tiles, you know, the traditional tiles on on the the roof. I thought, well, that that seems pretty, you know, pretty practical and and uh, and uh, sturdy, and so on. Things that you you know, uh, barring you know some some heavy tree branch that that uh, blows onto your roof or you know that might you know be heavy enough to crack the the tiles or something like that or a typhoon or something that has wind strong enough to peel the 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 tiles off of there mm -hmm. i mean basically they're they're yeah. on there for the life of the house right i mean they're really you know quite durable uh even more so Pretty more much. so than, more so, so than those uh uh tar paper uh the the tar paper type uh uh shingles that are on uh the houses in the area where i grew up with right those things you know mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. you know get although old. you know in some strong winds they do and typhoon and whatnot they have a tendency to to blow off right right, right yeah. uh and some of them do break so yeah. you know in which case you'll see houses with these blue tarps over you know right. for a while because right. of the, the the broken roofing tiles um but yeah no i think you're right they're pretty much on forever right you know, uh, so even in my house now we've got a variation on those water okay. right okay. tiles yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so i i think they i think mm -hmm. they initially i thought that they they look nice now you know i i see them or i see the i mean it it, it doesn't have any kind of impact on me anymore they, they've just you know it's like yeah the the house you know houses have you know roofs like that you know it's it's it, it doesn't have any impact anymore uh it's it still looks nice right. and you know i think it has a nice you know clean uh uh you know uh look to it and so on so i i, I like that mm. um yeah uh, you know and i i like it too i was just i was telling uh, i was just talking earlier about up and also mount also near our our cottage, there's a, there are traditional uh, farmhouses, right, that have been there for centuries. Mm -hmm. And one particular one has a thatched roof, uh, you know, over which they put like a metal uh, roofing, uh, not a t not tiles, but just a one, one, two metal roofs on either side of, uh, on top of the thatched roof. Huh. Which is interesting. So you can go up and look under and see the uh, the thatched roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've been in I've years, been in some yeah. of the you know the traditional thatched roof houses you know that even have the you know the you know the 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 cooking you know in the center you know where the you know the smoke rises up through the the roof and so on you know um, you know those old and you know some of the really old ones where you know the cooking has been going on for years and years and years and you can look up and you can see the straw thatch 
where the the smoke is exiting out has turned the the thatching uh black you know from you know from the from the cooking smoke you know in greece and so on oh yeah the old traditional style. wow yeah 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 um that's, that's and, ancient yeah yeah I, I i wouldn't i you know i wouldn't want to live in that uh, particular i mean i i you know especially as i get older when i was younger you know i liked japanese houses uh you know the 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 idea of you know in the summertime you open up all the sliding doors and you get that nice breeze through there and so on of course at that time i was living outside of the you know the the, the main part of the city I, you know, I was living in a smaller town and even that small town i lived kind of on the edge so didn't have didn't have uh, houses right next to us right you know we had you know mm -hmm. a garden in the front and a garden in the back and so on so uh you know the, space, yeah. the traditional you know the traditional ability to open up the 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 doors and you know the soji screens the doors and you know just let the air flow through uh it's about as cool as you mm -hmm. can get you know um but then if you wanted to uh you know I, you wanted the added but comfort. still that's not cool is it it's not no, it's really not cool. cool so if you want the added cool, comfort yeah. of, of an air conditioner then that's totally ineffective yeah. um, you know it, it, because those those thin japanese traditional paper doors and sliding screens and so on are just not gonna keep the heat out or not gonna keep the cool in when you got that yeah. air conditioner on so you're really you know uh, you know throwing your money out the window almost you know so uh, if you want an air conditioner, yes. don't uh -huh. recommend a Japanese <laughs> home at all. Absolutely not. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. Right. And if you look at this picture here, I've got, you know, what is the number 11? That's kind of the central uh, fire pit. Right. I forget yeah. what that's called. Um, right. To, to, to sit around and cook and you can eat on the ledge or around the fire right. pit. I forget what that's called. Right. That's what I was talking about. And then uh, the center of the traditional homes and it and goes up, right? There's no chimney. The yeah. just naturally rises right. up through to the center, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one, yeah. Again, it's maintenance heavy, isn't it? Uh, Wouldn't yeah. Wouldn't want to really have it nowadays, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is a pretty cool diagram of the the names. Whoops, sorry, what happened? Yeah, the parts of a Japanese house. Yeah. Uh, huh? So if anyone's interested, here's the exterior, right? And uh, what we were just talking about is the roofing kawada, the tiles here, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And the fudin, fudin are like wind chimes. Yes. Oh. There's a Kind of cool, yeah. Irori, Irori, Irori. Right, 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 right. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Here and here are some other traditional features of a Japanese house: the shoji, which is thin right. paper, which Dan was just talking about. Right. Uh, very difficult to keep uh, cool air in and hot air out. Right. Right. The Butsudan, it's, yes. It's, uh, it's that's like living with nature, you know, it's like living with nature, you know, yeah. it's hot outside, you know, well, I mean, you let in as much breeze as you can to try and cool things off, but, you know, you're you're living in nature, right? Yeah, so it's good in that way. Right. It is, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, Peter, oh, I didn't even right. know. Here's a Zebaton. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah. Right, yeah, there you go. And Tokonoma is another feature. Right. Uh, which are interesting in traditional Japanese homes. And again, you know, in modern Japanese homes, they very rarely have these things. Right. In my home, nothing like this in my home now. Mm -hmm. My wife's Japanese, so right, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, even in her, her parents do have a traditional tatami mat room, just one room with the tatami uh, mats. I think it's eight tatami mats and a tokonoma. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, uh, this shoji and and uh, whatnot just for show actually mm -hmm. so when a guest comes maybe they'll use it but these days they don't even use it at all it's storage now yeah right right yeah, it's just storage right mm -hmm. so it's interesting yeah let's look at your uh picture here dan what what, what might that be Oh, well, that's I mean, it's a again a more traditional japanese home there you can see the tatami the zabuton the kotatsu uh, and so on there, um, you know, so, uh, you know, the, here in the background, you can see the, the traditional, uh, the Ikebana and the traditional, uh, calligraphy, Japanese calligraphy, uh, writing, uh, written scroll there in the background. Um, every Japanese home, uh, you know, the older home that I've been in, uh, you know, somewhat traditional Japanese home that I've been in has 
you know, uh, this type of a this type of a, a setup. You know, you're you're going to find at least one of these uh, traditional callig uh, calligraphic uh, uh, calligraphy scrolls uh, there. Um, you know, somebody in the home probably does ikebana or something like that. You know, it's, this is just mm -hmm. so typical of so many of the homes that, that ikebana is, yeah, flower arranging. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, and you're right. This is a very traditional Japanese song. Yep. Uh, indeed, indeed. Here's a here's a, a kind of I guess a common uh, exterior of a traditional Japanese house. Yes, mm -hmm. and you can see the air conditioner up there. Yeah, <laughs> the air yeah. conditioner machinery. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure how cool the place gets. Right. But yeah. I think this is. I like the the exterior of these koala kind of those looks rather majestic yeah, and you can see big homes like this right uh-huh uh, in in mm -hmm. uh in more rural areas in japan yeah excellent yeah there you go dan what's that now what like this living in japan things to know about life in japan to know about yeah <laughs> absolutely very important yeah yeah. And some sometimes you don't really realize those things until you do move. Finding the flesh. But a lot of people are like us, I think, Dan. We came here to teach, and then actually after teaching, there's a a, a, a good one, right? A modern yeah. Japanese toilet. Yeah. Yep. Yep. More buttons on there than there are in a. You know, I mean, it's yeah. You don't know. You don't know what to push when you're done there. You know. Oh. No, exactly right. Uh, no, it's true. That's right. And compared to the uh, the traditional uh, toilet here, the Benjo, right? The floor right. squatter type. Right. Yeah. Very much different, isn't it? Those I have, to this day, I am not comfortable in those. I just, I mean, my, you know, I yeah. just am not, I, I just am not a squatter, you know? Um, I, yeah, yeah, it's and hard. I think it that, really that's is. Mostly an American problem. Uh, when I when I was in Spain, um, when uh -huh. I was in Spain, you know, I mean, you know, the nice place, you know, the you know the the you know the more um, urban, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, restaurants and hotels and so on had uh, Western or you know American style toilets and so on. But uh, when you went to a more uh, a rural places or uh, you know, places like, uh, you know, if you went into a restroom, uh, for example, near the beach, I went to the beach and the, and the restroom that was in that area, you know, for people to use uh, was basically a cement slab with a hole in the middle, you know, not, you know, not even as nice as the Japanese, <laughs> you know, um, so. Uh, you Reminds know. me of Cambodia or, or places in Indochina. Right, I've been, that's, right? that's my it's point. Similar yeah, thing, I, yeah. think that, I think that we're spoiled yeah. as being Americans. I mean, that's what I grew up with. And still to this day, I'm not really comfortable squatting like that to do my business. It's just uh, that, you know, I never had to do that. So. It's hard to squat. Like when I first came to Japan, I couldn't figure out which end was which, right? Right. Which yes. end do you, yep. Same here. do you face when you're. That's right. When you're doing your business, yeah. That's right. Because if right. you're not careful, things could go on the outside of the, right? <laughs> That's right. Is, it can happen. Totally can... unclean, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. You got to be yeah. careful with these kinds of things. Yeah, right. right. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed, yeah. Well, here's here's a thatched roof house for you, Dan. Right. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've seen I've seen some that's, like that. A, yeah, there are some even yeah, yeah in Kumamoto yeah. Prefecture, some of the areas. Yeah, you can find you can still see houses like this. Yep, in Niigata, yeah, I saw like even that. more. They were even a little more common up in Niigata mm -hmm. when I was up there. You know, so these rural areas, you're not going to find them in Tokyo, but uh, yeah, in no rural areas. Yep, rural areas for sure. Yeah, it's unique to look at. Again, like you said, wouldn't want to live in one. No, no, that would uh, be. Look how one. thick that is, too, yeah. right? Look yeah, how quite thick that thick. is. What are Japanese college yeah, dorms here's... like compared to U.S. dorms? Um, Good this university question. where I teach, we don't have a dormitory. There is no real school dormitory. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, the, the, there are a couple that do have dormitories. Um, 
Gaku and Daigaku has an international dormitory. Mm -hmm. The rooms there are very small and usually single rooms. So that's one difference. Yeah. Which usually is dormitory to, rooms from what I've heard. Yeah. yeah. To, to follow up on that, um, my personal experience uh, as a, a university student uh, in America, I always mm -hmm. had a roommate, whether it was in the dormitory or whether I rented an apartment or a house off campus, I always had roommates. This was like, you know, I mean, you know, for, you know, just for the, the expense, you know, it made sense to, to share the expense with somebody right. in Japan. Sharing the expense, that's it. In Japan, and same with me, same with me. Everybody lives alone. Everybody. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, alone, I know yeah. of a couple of students that are in a house where they're sharing, you know, and they, but those are just the rare exception. Everybody lives in their own apartment or they're living at home, right? If they're not living at home, yeah, they're, they're in their own apartment. Right. Even like uh, apartments that are near universities, basically they're geared towards students and they offer small, you know, one room studio apartments so students can, can one live room there. Or maybe a one, a one, one, one room, room in the kitchen. One room, or yeah, one, one room in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, across from my university, just straight across the street, there's a big, big uh, apartment building there. Yeah, and mostly uh, filled with students, and it's yep. just like that, right? Yep. Uh, a large studio or one room plus uh, a little bit of a, an LDK living dining kitchen yep. and a sleeping area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's one uh, difference, totally. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this but the the size uh, the size of the dorm room I would say yeah yeah Japan it's going to be smaller because it's built for one person rather than uh, most American dorm college dorms that I'm aware of are built for basically for two people, um, mm -hmm. so they're definitely going to be smaller. Uh, the amenities you know I mean it's uh, what I've seen it's it's similar in that there's like a a, a shared uh, rest uh, you know bathroom and and shower area and so on things like that and the, the cafeteria again is separate and so on um, so those kind of things mm -hmm. are similar but the the actual space that the individual has is probably well actually probably about the same there you know the the room itself is about half the size but then there's only one person uh, right living in there there's so. only one person. Exactly. So maybe the space is about the same. Yes. Uh, and then what I, and for, uh, as far as I'm familiar with Japanese dorms, uh, I think you alluded to that, Dan, or said it that, yeah, there's never really a cafeteria inside the dorm. It's always separate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and although most Japanese dorms have a, have rooms around a common area, right? So it's almost like a suite. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah actually, yeah. actually, so though, not at uh, at my my daughter's university, the the cafe or you know the 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 dining area was in the same building as the 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 dorm rooms. Was it okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They're not often like that, but I guess yeah, they're not often like that. But yeah, that, so uh, you know, it's it's not an absolute. You know, it's more common. You know, to find them. You know, in a separate building, but you can find it the other way right and sometimes like you said earlier japanese uh don't always have dorms uh, attached to universities yeah. right yeah here uh here they do not there's not there's not any uh real dorm um you know there uh, that they the, it seems that uh there's almost an agreement between the community and the university that the university is not going to step on the toes of the people that want to rent out apartments to the students right it's like you know they they allow that to go to the private sector or to the you know to the you know to the, the people right. there uh which you know it's that's kind right of, and i think you're it's what it is actually i think you're absolutely right you know uh you know i mean i, mean, I think that in a way that's good because it helps build community between the university and the the community ar around it you know um you know so the community actually looks forward to the new students coming in because okay we've got some new renters coming sure. in and so on you know so yeah it, it builds that kind of community it's good builds a community also space wise right for you know just space wise it's you know more uh more able to 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 do it that way as opposed mm -hmm. to having a large uh campus right Whereas, too, campuses in Japan are very much smaller than the West. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, generally, much, student much populations smaller. are much smaller than I mean, you know, 
I don't know. I don't know about uh, Todai or, or schools like that, you know, but I, I don't think any Japanese universities have, you know, like 40, 50, 60,000 students at a single campus where that is not at I all don't think common, so. you know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, University of Iowa, where I went to school, was one of the smaller schools in the in the Big Ten conference. And we had 33, mm -hmm. 33,000 uh, undergraduates, I think, you know, so. Um, and that would put it right, right. The top in Japan, if not at the top. Yeah. Yeah, basically. My university was uh, City University of New York, which was comprised of a lot of different campuses. So, yeah, o o you know, over 100,000 students. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, my daughter went to University of North Carolina, right? Just That's the Charlotte cool. campus was like 25,000 students. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's hard to believe because the, the campus, you know, in itself is not that big. I mean, you can drive around it. It's, it's you know, quite large compared to Japanese universities. Uh, but, yeah, it wasn't endless. I mean, it had finite borders and whatnot. But, yeah, 25,000 students. Of, and yours, too, 33,000 students. Yeah. Right. So you see my, my, Japan, my university right now is 1,500 students. Right. Maybe uh, 1,600. So totally. UCLA, UCLA has 31,000 undergraduates uh, for a total of 46,000 students, undergraduates and graduates uh, added together. So 46,000 wow. at wow. UCLA, you know, uh, like I said, you know, I mean, again, so that's wow. you know, on the larger side, you know, but I mean, it's, it's, it's just not unheard of at all. Whereas J Japan, that would be, uh, you know, uh, off the charts really. It would. It would be off the charts. Again, we don't know Todai or what have you, but mm. uh, basically, right? It's 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 unheard of in Japan. Yeah. yeah. Here's a. This is on just on my picture here in the bottom right is kind of a uh, an, a very nice. It looks almost new tatami room, right? With Shoji and Fusuma. Right. And I like. I do like the the light wood. Uh, emphasis in that I really I really do like that yeah you know and this again the smell of brand new tatami like this is fantastic right yeah it has a nuance all its own right so I could probably spend some time in this room sure do you like this room Dan yeah absolutely yeah um very it's nice, nice isn't it right very yeah. nice yeah, yeah very, very, nice. I, very nice I feel and here the the closets Right. You, yeah. you would feel comfortable for sure. Right. Uh, in these kind of closets, they would keep the futon, right, and things uh, to put on the floor. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's interesting. The Japanese word for the closet is oshiire, right? Oshiire. You know, mm, so push, mm -hmm. it, push it in, right? You push, push stuff into the closet kind of thing. Yeah, pushing in space, right? Exactly. Yeah. So Eleanor said her brother graduated from University of Iowa, Dan. Yay! Go Hawkeye. There we go. Go Hawkeyes, Hawks. Yeah. Yep, go Hawks. Yep. Uh, so I just looked it up. Tokyo the court, University, 27,000. That's, you know, the 27,000 regular students. That's big. That's comparable. That's comparable to to, uh, to um, University of North Carolina. It's, com yeah. it's comparable but, size. But this, this is everybody. Undergraduate, graduate together. Everybody. Right, not just undergraduate, oh, okay. not just the undergraduate right. college. This is the whole, the entire university. Todai, mm -hmm. yeah. That's amazing, yeah. That's amazing, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm looking actually, up CUNY I where I went. Hmm? Okay, CUNY, right, <laughs> which is City University of New York, comprised of Hunter College, Fordham University, City College, and Brooklyn College. I thought it was bigger, but it's only 18,000 students. Mm. Mm. You know, yeah, if you, uh, if you, if you check on the big 10, I think, you know, uh, those are, I mean, those are some, some bigger schools, I guess, you know, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty typically in the, you know, the thirties, 40,000, uh, students. Dan, this one, this picture on the right is in uh, Gokano Show. Do you are you familiar with Gokano Show in Central Kyushu? No, no, I don't know that. Yeah, beautiful area. It's really rural and it's really beautiful in the, uh, in the fall with the changing leaves and whatnot. This is a traditional house we went to down there. This is a heike, 
the Heike tribe escaped from Tokyo and they were kind of rebels in Kumamoto and, and kind of secretly lived in this house. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is a very interesting traditional house. And if you look up, these are the, the underside of the thatched roofs. Oh, okay. I thought that was interesting. It's yeah. kind of my first time to see something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I just curious. I looked up the Big Ten, right? Um, Fifty-one thousand yeah. at the University of Illinois. Northwestern, one of the small ones, right? Twenty-two thousand. Indiana, forty-three. Iowa, thirty-one. Only thirty. Wow. Yeah, okay. Um, Maryland, 31, 40, okay. Let's see, most of them, 40, 40 50,000, you know. Um, but Pennsylvania State. Hey, I thought you were aware of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania State. Pennsylvania State. Penn State, baby. 91,000. How many? 91,000. 91,000. Wow. That's at the That's main amazing. campus. The university main campus, 91,000. In, in State College, right? Yep. yep. Not not far from my hometown. Yeah. Yeah. And well, they let ninety they, they had ninety one thousand students and they still wouldn't let you in. Well, that tell shows where you you. <laughs> no, no, I I only went there to see a friend. That's all. Oh. Uh, hey, didn't want to didn't want to go there. It was too close to home. I had to get away from home. You know? Right. Yeah. Uh, didn't want to go to uh, Penn State. You know. Too many, too many warrants. Oh. <laughs> too many warrants right there. You had to get away from home. Okay. I had to, yeah, I had to escape my warrants, right? <laughs> Should have come to Iowa to see you. Absolutely, yeah. Iowa. Yeah, I didn't graduate from. But I wanted. To, I wanted. I wanted a little more than corn. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so and I mean. The university. I I got my undergraduate degree from Northern Iowa, uh, and uh, my oh, okay. graduate, and I got my my master's from the uh, University of Iowa. Yeah. So, um, and both of them, you know, very very uh, different schools, very very different uh, communities, and so on. I mean, they're both in Iowa, but uh, quite a different feeling. Uh, the um, University of Northern Iowa used to be the state normal school, so a lot of people there for education, and it felt more like a local school. Uh, mm -hmm. There were some international students and so on, but uh, it really felt more like you know you were in Iowa. Whereas the University of Iowa had a pretty significant uh, foreign uh, student population, uh, you know, uh, well known internationally, and you know with its science and writing and programs as well as the law school and the medical school and so on. So it felt you know so much. I mean, population wise, it was nearly double, but uh, it felt wow. you know, like. It, I mean, it just felt like 10 times bigger, you know, I mean, it really mm -hmm. no comparison. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. There you go. Yeah. Interesting. What, so what are the towns like around it? Well, I mean, small towns or. So uh, University of Northern Iowa is uh, on the edge of Cedar Falls. Uh, Cedar Falls and Waterloo are kind of a twin cities in, in uh, the middle of, uh, near the middle of Iowa. And yeah, they're, you know, like, I don't know what the population is, probably Waterloo, maybe uh, 80, 90,000, you know, not very big, you know, uh, and Cedar Falls is probably about a third that. So maybe, maybe well, maybe about 35,000, something like that. Um, Would you say they're traditional college towns? I mean, do they cater to the, the college crowd? Um, the university? Not not Probably. so much. I mean, Waterloo was pretty mm. much oblivious to the university. Cedar Falls, um, the the university was on the at, at the time I went there. Anyway, I don't know how it's changed, but at the time I went there, it was basically on the edge of town. Uh, there were cornfields and so on past the university, uh, or, or or more uh, almost uh, you know the more residential areas on uh, you know anything past you know it's either agriculture or residential past the university. Uh, the the part of the town that bordered the university did very much uh, uh, cater to the university. You know, there the the bars, you know, on the hill they called it. There was a a slight uh, sloping street uh, right on the edge of the university, and that was just mm -hmm. locked with with bars and and uh, and shops that catered to the university and so on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But there you go. Uh, <laughs> university University of Iowa 
is basically mixed in with uh, Iowa City. Um, in fact, is it really okay? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, for example, the you know the the university had uh, its own newspaper, but you found it distributed all throughout town as a free newspaper. So that's what everybody read. Everybody, you know, they, there was a, the, the city newspaper and a few people read that, you know, um, because it did cover, you know, more, uh, uh, more really local things. The, the University of Iowa newspaper was more international. It covered the university topics as well as international topics uh, to a greater extent, extent than the, the local newspaper. The campus bus, we call it the CAM bus, went throughout the entire town and anybody in anybody could ride the campus for free the cam bus for free wow you know, they had That's city great. buses okay. they had very city good, buses that did go out to some of the areas uh, that weren't covered by the cam bus but basically the cam bus covered most of the city and so everybody rode together you know so i mean it was really integrated the, the town was integrated or the the university was integrated into the town mhm mm mhm mm yeah that's great. Okay, cool. So it's kind of it's it's almost uh, catering to the student population, which is good, right? These yep. kinds of things, you know, you, big universities like that they bring in a lot of change and a lot well, of well, like I said, aspects, so over right? over thirty thousand university students at the uh, University of Iowa, only thirty five thousand residents at, at, in uh, Iowa City, Iowa. Mm. You know? so, I mean, yeah, the that's a huge population. influx of students. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. huge yeah. influx of students. So uh, yeah. every, well, every fall, right? That kind, of a, that kind of a population, you know, no. <laughs> when when no, basically right. one in no. two people there are. Or university students, I mean, uh, and that, that those yeah, are students, so 31,000 students, right? 31, 32,000 students. So then you've got the faculty, yeah. and the staff, you know, and so on, right? So actually, probably closer to two thirds of the people were either directly or indirectly involved with the university, you know. Oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I guess in vacation time, it really, really gets quiet there, huh? Um, when the students leave. I mean, if they leave, right? During I mean, vacations. I mean, there, there was a noticeable difference. Yeah, there was definitely a noticeable difference. Yeah. But there's okay. so much going on there. You know, like I said, you know, especially graduate yeah. schools, there's a lot of research that's going on year round and so on. So, and the graduate schools are pretty and, significant. And, and, yeah, 33,000 population, I mean, you know, non college population still that's big, right? right? So there's right. probably still enough going on. So you didn't feel it. But some towns, though, do have, they're basically college towns, right? Right. Uh, they have a tremendous influx of students during the school year. And then during vacations, the students move out and it gets really quiet, I've heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In my town, Greensburg, Pennsylvania, there's a small university called Seton Hill University. Uh, it too has got quite a few, uh, quite a large population of students. And my town's 25,000 people. Uh, so yeah, so it's it's noticeable. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's noticeable when students come and go, interestingly. Yeah, here's, here's one, last picture i want to just show here this is yeah this uh this again this traditional and this is in the town uh the heike house in uh gokonosho right mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. traditional yeah old house yeah it's, yeah it's really quite cool yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's got the like uh what it's called again idiose idiori 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 yes yeah, yeah, really good. Very nice. Live in Japan for 30 Great. years, still can't remember some Japanese words because yeah, you never see these. That's really. right. Really well, never. we never we never use it. We never see it. We don't have them when we right. don't use the word. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I forget Japanese, man, not yeah. using the word, yeah. not yeah. eating the vocabulary. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got some students coming here, Dan, in a couple minutes. So Okay. Let's call it a day, shall we? All right, it's a day. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a day. <laughs> When's your next uh, shot, Dan? <laughs> um, I don't know. When's I'll probably I'll probably be online uh, this weekend a little bit. You know, I'll, pro I'll probably I'll probably do a broadcast or, or so uh, sometime during the weekend. So, uh, U.S. time Friday yeah, night. Uh, Friday night, Saturday night. I'll probably be uh, doing some broadcasting.
Not I'd sure like to do that about. too. Yeah. I'd like to I'd like to do some horror story reading. Oh uh, yeah, there you, you know, go. Maybe I'll do that. Just a close over, over the weekend. Just while you're reading will scare anybody, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> See? See, Daniel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you very much, yep. uh, oh, Eleanor. Yeah. Today, I hope it's a good day for you too. Absolutely. Good night for you, actually. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks, Eleanor. Yeah. And when's your next vaccine, Dan? Vaccination shot. Yeah, I, the, it's this four kind weeks of, after what I the meant. first shot. Four weeks, uh, you know. So mine's the thirtieth. The thirtieth of July. Of July, yeah. Wow, nice. You got yours yeah. on what the ninth? It was the eighth. The eighth, okay. The eighth, so three weeks eighth, and a day, yeah. okay, yeah. I I have to wait four weeks and a day to get my second one. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. I found out. Yes, so I, I I asked him about that. I said, hey, you know, wait, are are you sure this is right? You know, you schedule because they automatically schedule your second one, right? And I said, wait a minute, you know, right. are you sure the, you're not uh, scheduling me a week late? And they said, yeah, you know, the, it has to be at least three weeks. But we've had a lot of people who got their first shot at the city, you know, the the Kumoto Joe Hall, and yeah, they, they chose to get their second shot at the hospital. They thought it would be, you know, more comfortable to get the shot at the hospital, right? So we've, oh, there, there's been an right. influx of gotcha. people that got their first shot one place and got their second shot at the hospital. So, so I that's see. Why okay, that's why. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know. uh, you'll be okay. You'll live. Don't worry. I probably could, you know, uh, go to the Kumoto Joe Hall and get my second shot there if I wanted to, but. Uh, and well, I'm, you got to make sure because, you know, mine, you because you, they make it so that, you you know, you have your date and to change is rather hard, I found out. Oh, really? Uh, the reason I know that is because I have my 30th, I have classes, the last day of classes. I have to miss them because my shot's there and I was trying to change it and it's really hard to change. Huh. Because uh, yeah, uh, yeah. the woman I know, she uh, she's 65, so she was in one of the earlier groups. Uh, and mm -hmm. she, you know, uh, uh, she changed hers uh, to a week later, and she didn't indicate that it was any kind of a hassle. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, may you know, I don't know if she had connections at the at the hospital or what. Not that I know of. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, she was talking to me, and yeah. she said, "Well, do you think I should change?" I said, "Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt, you know, and uh, you know to." To change it because i'm gonna had, try i mean yeah i don't know I, I i don't know that's that's the oh that's uh, i don't have any evidence other than that one anecdotal bit you know that she was mm. able to change and it seemed like pretty easily so i don't know yeah we were there's a website you can go to and it, you know they have opening open dates right and right. it looks like all the ones i wanted are closed uh, okay. but of course people do cancel Right. So maybe she was lucky in that respect. People that cancel or, you know, don't go be. or what have you. So. And like I said, that was during, you know, that was during the, the 65 and over uh, uh, segment, right? Ah, you know, so so right. that might have been, you know, the logistics might have been different. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. All right. I guess you got students. Well, cool. I'll, let you go. I'll, I'll let you. Yeah, I'll look for you over the weekend for the next one. Next right on. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get together yeah. virtually again here. Let's, yeah. let's do that. Let's cool. do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Oh, Sounds good. Hey, what are you doing Friday morning? Friday morning, tomorrow morning, nothing much. I have classes tomorrow afternoon, but in the morning I'm pretty open. Same here. So I may broadcast tomorrow morning or yeah. Um, I was I'll thinking start. I might broadcast too. Okay. Actually. All right. All right. Good. Let's coordinate something. We'll see what we can do. Let's coordinate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. 10-ish, 11-ish, right 12-ish. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably, probably earlier more than later, because I do have the one o'clock class and I just as soon have, you know, uh, have a little, uh, have a little breathing room before, you know, before the class starts. So yeah, earlier 10, 10 or 11, you know, either one would be fine. So yeah. Um, let's coordinate. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.